If you head down the shops at the minute, you'll find cut price Easter eggs and Easter chocolate everywhere. But that's not the only thing on offer. This is the Onyx pre-built gaming desktop from PC Specialist. It's had its pricing cut until the 21st of this month. Let's have a look at it and see how much bang you get for your bucks. Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru and to my full review of the Onyx pre-built gaming desktop from PC Specialist. So let's get the pricing out of the way to begin with. This PC costs £1,249 until the 21st of April. I'm going to go through all of the specs in detail in a second, but the main things to consider with that are that it's got an i5 14400F CPU and an RTX 4070 GPU. Looking on PC Specialist website and customising an identical system brought the cost to £1,449. That's a pretty decent saving of 200 quid on this system. It falls under their Computers for Next Day Delivery section on the website and it comes with their standard three-year warranty, which can be upgraded for a cost and get you some extra peace of mind. Let's dive in to look at the specs in a little bit more detail, shall we? The processor is the Intel Core i5-14400F. It's got 10 cores and 16 threads in total. Those P cores run at a base frequency of 2.5 GHz and can boost up to a maximum of 4.7 GHz. And then the E cores run at a base frequency of 1.8 GHz and can boost up to 3.5 GHz. The processor has a base power rating of 65 watts and a max turbo power rating of 148 watts. That CPU is sitting inside an Asus Prime B760M-A Wi-Fi DDR5 motherboard. This board has two M.2 slots, it supports Wi-Fi 6, it's got a 2.5 gigabit network port on the back. And in addition to that network port, in terms of rear I.O., you've got one display port, two HDMI ports, four USB Type-A 2.0 ports, two USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 2 ports, a PS2 port for anyone out there that's old enough to remember and know what that is. Then you've got some ports for audio and then obviously that network port that I mentioned a minute ago. Powering all of the gaming is a Zotac Twin Edge GeForce RTX 4070. That's a dual fan model of the RTX 4070. It's got 12 gig of GDDR6X memory, 5,888 CUDA cores, it runs at a base clock speed of 1920 megahertz and it boosts up to 2475 megahertz. If you want a more in-depth review of the RTX 4070 series of graphics cards, then be sure to go and check out one of Dominic's reviews after you've watched this one. Memory comes in the form of 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR5 running at 5200 mega transfers. The kit consists of two 16 gigabyte modules. There's no RGB here, it's just plain Corsair memory but I do like that they've opted for 32 gig over 16. The Onyx comes with a one terabyte SSD installed. It's the Solidyne P41 Plus. It's a PCI Gen 4 M.2 NVMe drive. And when I tested it with Crystal Dismark, it reported rough read speeds of 4,150 megabytes per second, and then write speeds of around 2,940 megabytes per second. Powering everything is a Corsair CX series 650 watt power supply. It's bronze rated and it's non-modular. It's nothing special, but it gets the job done and it's more than capable for the specs of this machine. Keeping the i5 cool, we have the PC Specialist Frostflow 100 ARGB V3 air cooler. Now you might look at that and think that an in-house model of cooler isn't gonna be any good, but as I saw in my review of the Quantum Pro S PC, this cooler is pretty good and it can easily handle the processor and keep it cool through some pretty lengthy gaming sessions. And all of the stuff that I just mentioned is housed in a Fractal Design Focus 2 case. It's a pretty standard looking case that's plenty big enough to house all of these components and it's got enough space to allow for a few upgrades down the line if you want to do that sort of thing. It comes with two Fractal 140mm aspect fans installed in the front for intake, and then PC specialists have stuck a 120mm fan in the back for exhaust. 
I like the fractal branding across the metal half shroud at the bottom, but I don't like the fact that that kind of shroud doesn't cover up the top of the power supply, especially with a non-modular unit installed like we've got on this system. Front IO on the case is pretty slim. There's two USB type A 3.0 ports and then some audio jacks alongside the power button. And there's a button for changing the lighting and stuff. There's, you can cycle through some modes. There is a USB type C port on there on this case that I was sent, but it's blanked off and it's not in use. Before we move into the testing and the benchmarks then, I just want to take a few minutes to talk about the build aesthetics, the attention to detail and the general looks of the system. As has always been the case with PC specialist systems, especially the ones that I've looked at anyway, the system has been put together really well. You can tell that whoever built this system did so with a bit of care and that they made sure that everything was as it should be. Cable management is good or as good as it can be with a non-modular and non-hidden power supply. They've done the best they can with a rather bland and boring looking machine. The combination of a relatively small graphics card, an MATX motherboard, and then mid-tower case, it does leave quite a lot of empty space inside, and the core components look a little bit like they've been plopped in the corner of an empty warehouse. But with that being said, this isn't supposed to be a high-end premium gaming system that wows everyone who looks at it for the first time. I'd say I'd, I'd describe it more as a high low-end to low mid-range gaming PC that aims to deliver decent performance without breaking the bank too much. So let's move on and look at how it performed through our benchmark, shall we? Now, as always, I've not done any tweaks or optimization to the operating system or to drivers prior to testing. The machine comes with Windows 11 Home pre-installed, which has been updated to the latest version. That's the only thing I've done to it. Kicking things off with Cinebench then, and just like the PC Specialist Quantum Pro S that I reviewed a while ago, the Onyx comes with Asus Performance Enhancement disabled within the BIOS by default. This is done to protect the CPU from excess strain and heat. It's much more relevant to higher end systems which have the possibility of overheating due to increased power usage from the CPU. The i5-14400F found in the Onyx doesn't fall into that category really, but it's still held back by the pretty conservative limits placed upon it with the default out of the box settings. And as it comes, the PL1 power limit was set to 65 watts and the PL2 power limit was set to 148 watts. They are the stock limits from Intel, as I mentioned when I spoke about the CPU specs earlier in the video. But with these limits, I saw a Cinebench multi-core result of just 13,466 points. Removing these limits by enabling Asus Performance Enhancement in the BIOS raises both the PL1 and PL2 power limits to 253 watts, essentially delimiting the power that the CPU can use. Doing that sees the score in Cinebench increase to 15,880 points. And while this does increase heat slightly, it's still very manageable for the cooler. It peaked at 73 degrees when I ran a Cinebench test with those power limits disabled. So just like the Quantum Pro S, the out of the box configuration leaves a fair chunk of performance on the table and enabling performance enhancement definitely improves the overall grunt of the CPU. But I'm switching the setting back off or putting it back to the out of the box settings for the rest of the benchmarks as I want to show you how this system performs as it comes from PC Specialist. Because a lot of people will buy a PC like this, plug it in and then just use it. They won't go tinkering in BIOS to chase down a rogue Cinebench score like I did. So I think it's only fair to show you how this system performs without doing that. If you're looking for a new chair, then you should definitely check out Boolies. I'm currently sat on their Ninja Pro Gaming Chair, which is one of three models from their gaming series alongside the Elite and the Master. So if you're looking for something new to stick in your setup that you can sit on and game and work, then I recommend definitely checking out Boolies.co.uk. Moving into Cinebench Single Core then, and the result was 1,786 points, which was a pretty poor showing placing it below every other Intel CPU in my comparison data from various past KitGuru reviews. 
If this is likely due to the CPU only using 55 watts of power during this test, Moving into 3D Mark Time Spy and then stacking this system up against the two previous PC specialist systems that I reviewed, and again with those strict power limits in place, the Onyx comes out bottom of the pile when compared to the Luna Pro R and the Quantum Pro S. But we have to bear in mind that at its current pricing, that offer pricing of £1,249, it's 150 quid cheaper than the Quantum Pro S and a whopping 550 quid cheaper than the Luna Pro R which that was the white PC that I checked out a while ago. That white build tax and white part tax is really becoming apparent in this slide. Taking the price and the power limits into account, I feel that these results stack up about right. They're in about the right order, the order that I'd expect to see. Moving on to look at memory then, and the DDR5 memory found in the Onyx performed quite well during our Ada64 memory benchmark. Read speeds were recorded at 76,923 megabytes per second, and write speeds were clocked at 72,740 megabytes per second. And then rounding out the synthetic benchmark section of the video with PC Mark 10, and I recorded results of 8,400 points overall, 10,170 points in essentials, 10,798 points in productivity, and finally, 14,664 points in content creation, helped in part by the 4070 that's sitting inside the system, no doubt. Moving on to look at gaming then, and kicking things off with Cyberpunk 2077. At 1440p, we saw average FPS readings of 64.6, with a 1% low of 50. And then at 4K, that dipped quite a lot, down to 27.7 FPS average, with a 21.4 FPS 1% low. And in Company of Heroes 3 then, at 1440p we saw an average FPS of a whopping 169, with a 1% low of 114.8. And then at 4K it was quite an impressive result, with the average maintaining just above 100 at 100.2 FPS, with a 1% low of 78.3. Hogwarts Legacy then, and at 1440p, the average FPS was 69.9, with a 1% low of 41.5, and then at 4K, that average dipped down to 36.2 FPS, with a 1% low of 25. And in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p, we saw average FPS of 148.2, with a 1% low of 120.8, while at 4K, this total maintained 77.8 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 66.1. The Witcher 3 then, an oldish game now, but still quite demanding. As we can see at 1440p, the average FPS was 63.5, with a 1% low of 48.6. And then at 4K, that figure was 33.1 FPS average and 27.1 FPS 1% low. And in a Plague Tale Reckon then, a really, really good looking game. At 1440p, we saw average FPS readings of 66.5, with a 1% low of 54.6 while at 4K that dropped down to 37.6 average FPS and 31.4 FPS 1% low. F123 then, the first racing title in the 10 game benchmarks. At 1440p we saw average FPS of 149.4 with a 1% low of 121.3 and then at 4K it maintained 100 plus FPS just about at 100.6 FPS average and 79.6 1% lows. And the other racing title in the lineup then is Forza Motorsport, and at 1440p this title maintained 61.7 FPS on average and a 52.1 FPS 1% low, while at 4K that average dropped down to 48.6 FPS with a 42.4 FPS 1% low. Moving on to Assassin's Creed then, the latest title in this franchise, at 1440p I saw average FPS readings of 105.9 with a 1% low of 83.3, and then quite impressively, at 4K, we saw the average FPS maintain 65.5, so breaking that magical 60 FPS barrier that a lot of people look for, while the 1% lows stood around 53.8 FPS on average. And finally, to round out the benchmarks then, Starfield at 1440p had an average FPS of 56, with a 1% low of 45.9, while at 4K that averaged it down to 35.7, but the 1% low was quite impressive at 29.7. And then finishing off the gaming benchmarks then to look at the 10 game average readings. At 1440p the average FPS was 95.5, while the 1% low figure was 73.3. While at 4K it was just shy of 60 with an average FPS of 4K across all 10 titles that we benchmarked of 56.3 FPS, while the 1% low figure was 45.5 FPS, 
That 10 game average gives you a nice overall look at how this system performs in a variety of titles. Moving on to look at thermals, noise and power then, and the CPU package power at idle sat at 30 watts, in Cinebench it jumped up to 59 watts, and then in Cyberpunk 2077 it jumped up again to 125 watts. The CPU package temperature at idle was 37 degrees, while in Cinebench it was 67 degrees, and then a shade lower than that in Cyberpunk at 59 degrees. The GPU temperatures in a Cyberpunk 2077 sustained test then, the GPU hit peak temperatures of 70 degrees, while the hotspot temperature reading from Hardware Info was 83 degrees, and then the memory temperature peaked at 76 degrees. System noise, this is quite a quiet system, it's not silent, but at idle we saw 36 decibels, in Cinebench that was 39 decibels, and then in Cyberpunk with the GPU fans working a bit harder, that was 40 decibels. And then finally, the total system power measured from the wall socket at idle was 57 watts. In Cinebench, that jumped up to 195 watts. And then finally, in Cyberpunk 2077, that was 346 watts. So there we have it then. That was the Onyx pre-built gaming desktop from PC Specialist. Again, this thing is on offer at the moment for £1,249 until the 21st of this month. For that reduced price, I think it's okay. The performance wasn't amazing, no doubt largely the fault of the system being held back by the very, very cautious out-of-the-box settings. And I just want to reiterate why I left those settings as they were for the majority of the tests. A common reason for people buying pre-built computers over building their own is that they might lack the confidence or knowledge to build their own, so they may not be comfortable heading into the BIOS to enable that Asus performance enhancement, so they're going to miss out on some performance from the i5, on the flip side of that though, the system will remain within Intel's recommended limits in its stock setup and that may lead to less troubleshooting and headaches further down the line. I have to approach the review from a technical standpoint but I 100% understand why PC specialists ship these PCs out like this. It saves customers from facing unnecessary issues. A few more things that I want to mention is the one terabyte SSD may have been enough a few years ago, but with games growing in size seemingly every day now, I think a two terabyte drive would have been more suitable. For example, installing the latest Call of Duty with all of the optional extras and then Warzone alongside it takes up way over 100 gigabyte. The looks of the build leave a bit to be desired, I think. MATX boards always look a little lost in a mid-tower case, in my opinion. There's a lot of empty space in there. The silver lining, I guess, for that, though, is that it's good for airflow and it's good for upgrades in the future. And this, this definitely looks a lot better than the first PC I ever had back in the day. So for someone getting into gaming, this would suit them perfectly well. Overall, it's a decent gaming machine with the latest generation of NVIDIA graphics DDR5 platform, you're getting in onto a decent platform and there's some upgrade headroom there and it's at a decent price at the moment. At full price, I might have a different opinion, but at that offer price of £1,249, I think it's okay. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a like down below if you did. If you go down below the video, you'll find links to our Patreon page, our Discord server, our website and our merch store. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest uploads from KitGuru. Anyway, guys, I've been Matt. This has been the Onyx pre-built desktop from PC Specialist. I will speak to you in the next one. Look after yourselves. See you later.